Can we hear it start up? Sure can. So it's a one piece tilt front end now. It's a 66 Fairlane. This is my office right here. Hi, Randy Bybee, Awesome Cars Forever. I'm here today with Ron Scott. And we're going to start, out of his collection, we're going to start with this 32 Ford right here. Oh, uh, this is a 32 Ford three-window coupe. I started building it in 94. Went to Roach to shop, bought a bare frame, and just kind of paid as I went. I bought a height front end, a Jaguar rear end. When I was ready for the engine, I bought a crate motor, an LT4, uh, Corvette engine. Uh, I took a 55 Chevy and sectioned the dash to get it to fit into the coupe, which turned out, I think, kind of neat. Uh, stainless exhaust. Uh, <laughs> this. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and start walking around it here. Okay. Um, what kind of wheels are those? Okay, those are Torque Thrust 2 is what they're called. They're polished aluminum. Uh, 15 by 10 on the back, or 15 by 8, I'm sorry, and 15 by 3 on the front. Looks good, looks good. And like I say, you can see the polished stainless exhaust. And then that's the, the height independent front end. Well, there's the 55 Chevy dash that I sectioned. And I knew if I could get can, this... Can we open up this door? Yeah, let's go to the other side. I knew I could... If I could get this to roll into the trim, it'd pull it off. Okay. Yeah. The seats are out of a Mercury Sable. I had the headrest cut off. It was upholstered down in Mitchell, Indiana. Uh, interiors by Ed. That's a Cadillac tilt telescopic wheel. Let's see if the old man can squeeze in here. <laughs> it's got vintage air. Oh yeah. That's the Corvette LT4. It's got a roller rocker, roller cam, but it was a brand new uh, factory crate engine. I got a Griffin aluminum radiator. It's a 4L60 transmission. Like I said, it's a Downs fiberglass body. It's a uh, a Dan Fink aluminum grill, custom grill. Looks nice on there. Yeah. The color is a, a Ford factory color. In 94, it was a Mustang pace car, and it's a paint code Z8, but it was a Ford factory color Mustang in 94. It was the pace car for the Indy 500. Hmm. It's the color. Where, where'd the headlights come from? Uh, they're a Summit. It's a Dietz. They're called a Dietz headlamp. Uh, aftermarket headlamp. Oh, okay. And I made the stands off that height front end to mount the headlamps. Let's hear this run. I can't wait. Okay. Let me hear it from out back here. That sounds really nice. That sounds really nice. Now notice 
you got Ronnie's rocket put on there. Can yeah. you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, as I was building the car, like I said, I started in 94. And uh, my mother, she has pictures from when we grew up and always collected pictures. And one day I was over there and we were talking. She says, Ronnie, she says, look at this picture I found. And it was a picture of uh, me and my dad. And my dad had built a bicycle out of scrap parts. And she said uh, when he built that, he took shoe polish and he put Ronnie's rocket on the chain guard. So I knew then when the car was finished that it was going to be named Ronnie's Rocket, kind of in tribute to my dad and what he'd done for me. Uh, he, he passed away when I was only 10 years old. So, you know, just some of the memories of my father and that's the reason the car's got the name on there. I'm sure he's looking down and very proud. <laughs> In fact, can I get a picture of this over here? Yeah. Yeah, that's the actual photograph. I don't know if you can get it. That's me and that bicycle. And then, like I say, that's my father. And he passed away about a year after that picture was taken. They had a story in the Erickson paper about it. Hmm. That's a great story. That's a great story. And this is one beautiful car. So, well, let's move on to the next one. Okay. That's a, that looks like an interesting story too. Yeah. So, uh, Growing up in Elwood, uh, my uncle, he raced USAC, Sprint and Midgets. And Virgil Welch owned a trucking business there in Elwood. And they had a Curtis Craft Midget such like this that had an aluminum V8 in it and I found this car in 2014 on the internet and I told my wife I said it's not practical but it sure takes me back to my youth when I'd hear him fire up the car and I'd run down there on my bicycle to watch him working on the race car so like I said I bought this in 2014 it's a Curtis Craft it's chassis 294 out of 550 they built 550 of these cars in Glendale, California. Frank Curtis was the manufacturer. He ended up building Indy cars in through the 50s. And like I say, uh, this car raced primarily in Wish Michigan, or not Michigan, but Wisconsin back in the day. And uh, it's all aluminum body. Uh, I had it painted up in tribute to the car my uncle raced back in the early 70s and uh, originally this car had an offy engine but those <laughs> tore up eventually and a guy named Don Black restored this car and he was an engineer for Alpha USA so he put a 51 Alpha Romero engine in this car and, and that's the reason for the engine being in there. It never huh. raced competitively with this engine but it looks just like an offy motor and it I joined a vintage club out of Indianapolis. It's Midwest Vintage <coughs> Race Car Club and we go to race tracks around here, Winchester, Anderson, and we get to go out and do exhibition laps. And uh, I'm having a blast with this car. Oh good. Good. Can we can we see the motor in it? Yeah, if you pause it for a second, I'll go get us. Okay. Wow. That's a, a 51 Alpha. It runs on methanol. It's got Hillborn fuel injection. Uh, each time I run the car, uh, methanol is highly corrosive, so I have to take it back to the shop and I have to flush out all the methanol and then I pickle it with a gasoline oil mixture. So, because methanol is highly corrosive if it just sets. And that's a bad thing. Yeah. But yeah, but that engine's reminiscent of an off because like I say, it's got a dual overhead cam with the Hellborn fuel injection. Can we hear it run real quick? No. <laughs> it has to be push started. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it, it don't have any fuel in it. No, that's... Here, I'll show you over here. I'll explain how this goes. 
when I get in the car, I lock it in gear because it's got what they call an in and out box. So it's locked in gear. Okay. And this sets the rear brakes and I'll have a push truck come up and I'll give him the signal. He'll start shoving me. And I'll slide the tires for a little bit and then I'll release the brake. That starts spinning the engine and I watch the oil pressure. And once I got oil pressure, I'll turn on the magneto and turn on the fuel and it, it lights up like a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> very good very yeah, good that's, so that's how that works it's either in gear or out there's no clutch I'll bet it I'll bet it to run though oh it's yeah it's a lot of fun I'll bet it is yeah yeah I'll bet it is <laughs> well can we go on to the next one sure uh, this is a uh, I've owned this car the longest it'll I've owned it 40 years come March I bought it back in 85 uh, when I bought the car, it was butternut yellow, and it was a six-cylinder three-speed. So, about the first four or five years that I owned the car, I uh, purchased a 427 390 horse out of a 69 Caprice. I put an N22 four-speed in it, a 12-bolt posi rear end. It's got four-wheel disc brakes, and I had it painted there at FedEx Body Shop, Aaron Elwood. So that paint job is uh, going on 40 years old. It was painted in 85. Wow, that, that paint is in good shape. For... Yeah, it's Emeron, black Emeron. And, uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard the term Emeron for a long time. Yeah, that's good, it's painted. Whoa. Yeah, that's the 427 390 horse. I put dual fours on it. <coughs> the headers. So, the dual quads and the headers, I mean, is there any internal work? Like, Well, I took it down to uh, Holly Performance in Fortville, and he, you know, cleaned up the cylinders, bored it 30 over, and balanced everything. But other than that, that's about all I've done to it. Wow, that is nice. And what year is this? 67. It was the Six, first year for... Oh. I'm sorry, I forgot to look for the wing window. <laughs> yeah, it's the first year for Camaros. Yep. Let's see what we got. MSD. And the radiator system is... <coughs> it's aluminum. I bought it through Summit. Uh... A lot of them, if you order them specific for the car, they're usually like two or three hundred bucks more. Where I just took the dimensions and just bought a like a common well, aluminum that'll, radiator. That'll work. That'll work. Yeah, I made the brackets and the fan shroud myself. Well, let's see if we can hear this run. Okay. While you're starting it up, I'm going to walk around a little bit. Okay. I love that sound. Now that's a Flowmaster. Flowmaster exhaust? Yeah. All the force too, it's just got one long muffler that's parallel with the axle. It comes in with that sound. That sounds good. I mean, it sounds extremely good. And, and the wheels on this are what? Uh, those are... Uh, Oh, let me <laughs> They're like a torque thrust, they're just a gray center. Uh, Ginko out of Pennsylvania built some big block Camaros like this. Yeah. And this is sort of reminiscent of the wheels that they put on them Ginko cars. Uh, aluminum wheels with the gray center. They look nice.
Sounds good. Now, the you know, like the, the stripes. I mean, everything. Who, who, who was it that painted this? Greg Fetic. Fetic's Body Shop in Elmwood. Okay. Normally, them Camaros had what they called just a bumblebee stripe. So I went ahead. Since the Con Dixon hoods didn't come out until 69, I put a 69 hood and I just went ahead and changed the stripe a little bit where they run up the Con Dixon hood. It looks good. Something looks good. Okay. Well, we can go on to the next one. All right. Okay. We're ready for the Corvette. Yeah. Uh, this is a 65 Corvette Milano Maroon with a maroon interior, which makes it kind of rare because most of the maroon Corvettes had the black interior. Uh, working at Fisher Body and Marion, I'd met a garage mechanic on third shift told me he had a car for sale and wondered if I'd be interested. <laughs> He was telling me about the 65 coupe he had, and trying to hold my excitement down. I told him, yeah, I'd definitely be interested. <laughs> so I ended up buying the car. It was in a pole barn, and it was it needed some work. Uh, I got a son-in-law that's a real good painter, and he buffed the paint job, got it slicked up. Bryce Burks is his name. Uh, I went ahead and had the engine rebuilt. It's a 327, 300 horse. I pulled the interior out, put insulation in the floor. I put a vintage air conditioning system on it. Uh, Hubcaps were beat up. I had them restored. Tim Robinson out of Elwood, he's real good at uh, repairing stainless for dents and stuff like that, so he restored my hubcaps. Uh, I put brand new exhaust on it. Uh, just went through and cleaned it up real good and made it a nice driver. I'm, I'm sure it does drive nice. Yeah. I may have to have you open the doors on this one. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, I've restored the gauge cluster. I bought this car in 08, so I've had it 16 years. Another part of the family. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I put the vintage air on it. These cars are kind of hot without it. This is the first year that they put disc brakes on Corvettes with 65. Oh, okay. So this, yeah, you're, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so this has got the disc brakes with the power booster. And that's about the only option it had was the disc brakes and the, the power booster. Let's hear this start up, and while you're doing that, I'll walk around it again.
nice mellow tone to this. Yeah. Wow. Did that come stock with the red line tires? No, they weren't available until 67, the red lines. Now you could get a gold stripe, but I just love the looks with the maroon body of putting the red lines on it. Yeah. They're a diamond back tire who made the tire, I think they're out of Carolina. They take a firestone and they take the sidewall completely off and then they vulcanize that smooth sidewall off. Really? There. Yeah. Well, Ron, I want to thank you for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Dude. Okay. This has been a thrill. I mean, these are these are some nice cars. Well, thank you very and, much. And uh, I hope everyone will subscribe. And I would like to thank all my current subscribers. And we'll see you next time on Awesome Cars Forever. Thanks.